Okay, so let's take a look at question number eight and how we can interpret a set of data in terms of um, a what's called our standard normal distribution. So what we have is we have a population um, sample or collection here and we're told that the mean of this data is 4,000 and we have a standard deviation of 500. So we need to represent this information in terms of a normal curve. Okay, so the normal curve means that it is going to be um, symmetrically distributed um, uh, to the left and to the right of the mean. And uh, we're looking to calculate some percentages for different values of this curve. All right, so let's take a look at how we could sketch this curve out first of all, and then what those numbers would tell us and what they mean. So we'll just draw a standard normal distribution curve. So what you wanna do is you wanna draw a curve that is fairly symmetrical supposed to be ideally symmetrical around the middle. Um, so I'll mark the middle right here and then we'll put a little tick here. And the middle of the curve of a standard normal distribution, so this means that the curve looks like it should be evenly um, drawn to, uh, from going from the left side to the right side. The, uh, the middle point here is 4,000. So that's also known as our mean. And we're told that a standard deviation of 500 is, is what the calculated value is. So that means if we were to add 500 to the score, so we'll go up one here and we'll put in 4,500. And if we were to subtract 500, we'll go to the left side here, which would be 3,500. Okay, that encompasses one standard deviation of, of, um, of value or of area. And then if we were to move another 500 units up, so we'll say this is 5,000, and we go lower, so 3,000, that is equal to two standard deviations. Okay, and then we could actually go a little bit further, so I'll squeeze this in here, we can go to 5,500, and then we could go all the way down to 2,500, okay, and that is equal to three standard deviations. So what let's do is let's just kind of mark in what those areas mean here. So I'll just do this part here in red. So if we take our first standard deviation, our first standard deviation is going to cover an area under the curve that I've marked here in red. Okay, and I'll do actually, I'll just put the center line in here to mark in as the mean. So what does this actually represent? Well, this means the area under the curve is equal to what we're looking for. It's equal to our percentage values, okay? And from a, a standard curve, we know a couple of um, facts that are sort of always true when, when we calculate these curves. That a one standard deviation moved on either side means that we are gonna capture exactly 34.17% of the area to, to the left and then to the right. So that is what, what's called our one standard deviation move. Now if we add those two values up together, we're gonna, we'll see that a one sigma or one standard deviation move is equal to um, essentially 68.3%. Okay, so that's the probability of having values that are between 3,500 and 4,500 you are gonna be right 68.3% of the time. Okay, but that gives us a little bit of room where we're not going to be right. So what is the next area going one more standard deviation out? So if we go to 5,000, and I'll just mark this area here at 5,000 or 3,000, okay, we're gonna grab a little bigger area or we're gonna add another extension to it. Okay, we're gonna, you would find that you would grab another 13.6% um, of area going out to that one, one more standard deviation. So that's, that's now two. So in total, the area between um, the left and the right side, if we were talking about a two standard deviation move, is equal to 95.5%. So that's pretty high. So that means within two standard deviations, you're going to be right almost 96% of the time. Okay, and then we could go out one more to capture the extreme tails here. Okay, three standard deviations. There's a very, very small area that you will capture here, which is just this tail end right here. 
okay and that I'm just going to mark in the value of that little area is worth 2.5 percent so that means we would now at a three standard deviation move we would be capturing 34.17 13.6 plus 2.5 on both sides of the curve. So that is going to give us a total of 99.7%. So it's almost essentially 100%. That's about as sure as we can get. Um, you actually can go out one more division to capture even a small amount, smaller amount, but you can see that the, this number is getting very, very close to 100%. It never actually touches 100% because the curve technically never gets to zero, but we get so far away or so far um, close to 100% that we can essentially be certain that we're capturing all those values. Okay, so that's how this curve is, is sort of defined um, around those values. So if we look at our question, it says here, what percentage of the attendance figures would be less than 3,500? So this is the question. What is saying less than 3,500 attendance, how much would we get? Well, we want to kind of look at this accurately, but we can kind of think about this. So we know that if we are at 3,500, and this is going to be 2.5% here, Okay, anything less than 3,500 is going to be equal to the area of 13.6 plus um, the approximate 2.5%. So it, we're going to be approximately 15 to 16% um, of the area that is going to be less than 3,500. Now if we want to try to be a little bit more exact, we can say the following. Well, we know that half of the curve is going to be 50%. Okay, because we're less than 4,000. So anything less than 4,000 is going to be the 50% of the curve um, that we're going to take the area with. But we want to be less than 3,500, so we're just going to have to take away the 34.17%. And we would find that this value is equal to approximately 50 minus 34.17. We can essentially say it's about 16%. So that would be the rough way to do the calculation. Or you could say, if you wanted to do this another way, you could just say, well, I'm gonna take the 13.6%, which is less than 3,500, then I'm gonna add the 2.5%. And then there would be a small residual amount, but it's so small that it really isn't gonna make a difference. And then we would get a roughly about 16.1%. Okay, so that's just a rough estimate on how to do that question. We can be more precise because there is an equation that governs this, but if we're just eyeballing these intervals, that, that's an example of how you would do it. And then the, the second part of this question says, what percentage of the attendance figures would be greater than 5,000? Okay, so we want to know what is greater than 5,000. Well, again, we know that anything above 4,000 and up is going to be 50%. So we want to know what's greater than 5,000. Well, we can be pretty confident that anything above the 5,000 here is going to be in this 2.5% interval. So the way that um, you could do this is you could say, well, Anything above 5,000, the bulk of it is going to be approximately 2.5%. So that's a good enough answer. There's a little bit left over here past 5,500, but it's so small that, that um, it, it really isn't going to make too much of a difference. Um, the other way we could do it is we could say, well, anything above 4,000 is going to be 50%. But then we just want to take away the two big chunks up to the 5,000. So we're going to subtract 34.17 and 13.6. Okay, and when we subtract those two values from that, 50 minus 34 is um, roughly 16 minus 13, which is about 3. And then we take away the 0.6.7. You're going to get roughly about 2.5% again. Okay, approximately. So either way to look at this is you can do a rough back of sort of the hand calculation that 2.5% um, of the population is going to be above 5,000 at that point. Okay, and then the final question is um, what percentage of the attendance figures would be between 3,700 and 4,300 
each week. Okay, so I'll squeeze that in here on the bottom. Now, 3,743 do not, those numbers don't line up with any of our markings here on the graph. So let me just switch that to another color. 3,700 is like about right here, maybe. Actually, it's probably a little bit higher than that. Let me just redraw that line in. 3,700 is maybe about there. And 4,300 is going to be before this. So essentially what we want to do is we want to calculate this area under the curve here where we don't have the numbers marked in any kind of accurate way. So there is no way to really do this with an estimate. What you will have to do is you'll have to take your calculator's function Okay, using the norm CDF function on the TI calculator. And you plug in the first two variables, which are the limits of the range. So it's 3,700 and 4,300. And then the mean is 4,000 and the standard deviation is 500. And the calculator will do the math that uh, behind that that describes that curve. And you will see that the answer here is about 41.5%. And that's a highly accurate answer because it, it goes through the, the actual equation that, that governs the shape of that curve. So there's a 45% probability that um, if we have a population within those two intervals that we've got, that is the correct value for that. Okay, so that's how you do that question. Um, in order to do this manually, you kind of need to understand the curve to begin with. And you need to know what the common intervals are for one standard deviation, two standard deviations, and three standard deviations. Okay, and then you should know that what you're really doing is you're breaking up the left and the right part of the curve. So half of, the, half of this value belongs on the left side and half of it belongs on the right side. And you just kind of need to be able to at least mark in up to three standard deviations. Okay, and then um, you should be able to get a question like this. But if you're going to be going for accuracy, you would always use the norm CDF function.